Hey New Life, welcome to our online church experience this week. It's so great to be with you all. Before we get going, leave a comment in this feed. Let us know that you're here. Let's say hi to one another really quick. And if you're new with us, thanks so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you with us. Hey, if you're brave enough, leave a comment in the feed. Let us know that you're new and let us greet you. If you have any questions, if anything from the service impacts you, we would love to hear from you. So send us a message on Facebook, get a hold of us through email, give the church office a phone call. We would just love to get better connected with you. So with all that said, it's time to get started. We'll get started with worship. Hey, good morning, New Life. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, before we get into worship, I just wanted to say how much we miss seeing you face to face, but it's so awesome that we get to worship together like this, whether you're in your living room, in your jammies, or whatever. Uh, no matter where we are, what our circumstance, we can always worship because we know that Jesus is alive and he's in charge and we're going to win this battle. Amen. Uh, I know you guys are missing the handshakes and hugs and high fives, but no worries. You can do that where you're at in your living room. Go ahead and turn to whoever's next to you and give them high fives. Uh, if you're by yourself, hey, I got you covered. Virtual high five. We got it. All right, we're going to get worshiping. We love you. God bless you. Have a great day, new life. life.
Fall apart 
for joining us on Palm Sunday as we remember the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and what would become the most important period of human history. On Palm Sunday, we shout Hosanna. Hosanna kind of like means hallelujah. It's a shout of praise, but Hosanna also means save us. It's a good day to say Hosanna. Lord, save us. That can be our prayer. But Lord, we praise you can also be our shout. The two go hand in hand. We praise because he saves, because he loves. The scripture says that God is love, and God defines what that means in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Love never ends. Scriptures really reflect, that scripture reflects the heart of God as found in the life of Jesus. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God wants to get his kind of love in us. These challenging times are the perfect opportunity for God to do just that. Let's pray together. God, we want to thank you for your love and we want your kind of love, a love that sacrifices and serves, a love that is patient and kind with each other as you are so patient and kind with us, forgiving us and showing us mercy. We want a heart that does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude because Jesus was gentle and humble. We want a heart that refuses to insist on its own way and gets irritable when it doesn't get its way. We want a love that puts others first just just as Jesus put our needs first when he went to the cross. Lord, let, let our level of love meet our level of truth. Lord, give us a love that endures and perseveres through the trials that we're experiencing right now. God, we want your kind of love. We give thanks to you, Lord, for your good and your steadfast love endures forever. In the name of Jesus, the one we shout Hosanna to, we pray, amen. Well, let's continue our time of worship as we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord in his work. I just want to thank you for your continued faithfulness to, in giving to New Life. Since we're not meeting in person today, you can still give at wearenewlife.church or you can text your giving to the number eight. 4321, 84321, or you can also mail it to New Life at 6115 Shattuck Road, Saginaw, 48603. Your giving will enable us to continue to minister to our church family as well as our community as we face all of these challenges together. When we give, we are responding to God's grace. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 and 8, each one must give as decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to give to you. Giving makes us more like you because you gave it all on the cross. You gave for the Father's glory, Lord, and you gave for our benefit. Lord, bless the gift and the giver according to your word and your powerful name. Amen.
So we have a few announcements for you this morning. Here's just a short update on where we're at. Please let us know if you have any prayer or support needs. Um, even though the office is closed, we are checking messages. So uh, just leave a message at 989-498-0223, or you can message us on Facebook, uh, and we'll do our best to get right back to you. On weekdays, just as a reminder, I'm leading a short devotional on New Life Saginaw's Facebook page at 730. We're doing the Book of Psalms. So please join us there. And we're continuing to collect personal care items along with paper products for the rescue mission and personal protection equipment, masks, gloves, and so on for our healthcare professionals and first responders. Just drop them off in the box, a uh, big white box at the entry uh, of the front doors of New Life, uh, 6115 Shattuck Road, and we'll make sure they get to where they need to go. Uh, things are a bit mixed up right now, uh, but this is Holy Week. We, like the church for thousands of years, no matter what the challenges were, take time to celebrate this special week, this week that's focused on Jesus. So please join us on this page this week. Uh, today, of course, is Palm Sunday. This Thursday, we'll have a Facebook Live Holy Thursday communion service. So have some crackers and a beverage uh, ready to go at 7 p.m. on Good Friday. We'll also have a service on this page. Uh, we'll read, remember, and pray, um, 7 p.m. And then, of course, on Easter morning at 10 a.m., we'll celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So now let's get ready for the sermon. I would like you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 21 and Psalm 118. Now, before I read this passage of Scripture, which is the story of Palm Sunday, let me provide you a little historical background to set the story up. On Palm Sunday, we sing and shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That was the cry of the original, the first Palm Sunday. So let's go back to that original day, that time period, 2,000 years ago. This story, of course, takes place in Jerusalem. Jerusalem sits on a hill about 2,500 uh, feet above the ground. Uh, so, and, and you see in Scripture that they went up to Jerusalem because they were going up on a hill, the mount. Jerusalem and the whole area was under the control of the Roman Empire. The Jewish people were under the thumb of the Romans. The Romans chose the high priest, the religious leader of the people, and even kept his sacred garments locked up so he couldn't get to them unless they released them to him. The Romans even approved the client kings of the area. In fact, at the time, there wasn't even a king. They were called tetrarchs. The little kingdom was divided up into four parts, and there weren't even four leaders at the time. Um, these tetrarchs were not even legitimate kings. They were not descended from King David. God promised David that someone would always sit on his throne. Of course, Jesus is that king that does. 1 Kings 11.36 and 2 Kings 8.19, if you would like to look that up. The Romans ruled. And as with any people, the Jewish people wanted to be free. They didn't want to be on the rule of someone else. And here comes Jesus. He heals people. He commands demons to flee. He speaks to wind and waves and tells them to sit down and shut up. And they do it. He raises the dead. He preaches like an old-time prophet, and he speaks with authority. Moses predicted someone like Jesus would come in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, someone that would speak with authority that the people needed to listen to. And some have even accused Jesus of making himself equal with God because it was true. That's what Jesus said. So here comes Jesus. He just raised one of his friends from the dead, Lazarus. He had been in the tomb for days, and then Jesus shows up, tells the people to roll away the stone, and commands, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, he does. Word was out. This happened just a few miles outside of Jerusalem. Jesus was dangerous. Prophets were always dangerous. And Jesus was descended from King David. We know that from Matthew and Luke. David was a king and a prophet. But right now, Caesar is king. And how could Jesus ever be king against the king of the Romans? Jesus was dangerous. People went to check out the story of Lazarus. It was just right outside of Jerusalem. And many believed in Jesus and placed their faith in him. But some went back to Jerusalem to report in. We see this in John chapter 11, 46, 48. Some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we going to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So they plotted to kill Jesus. 
is interesting. The Pharisees and the chief priests didn't even get along theologically, but they were united in their opposition to Jesus. So here comes Jesus, powerful in word and deed. People followed him. One time, Jesus miraculously fed 5,000 people from a few loaves. People were amazed. John 6, we see this, verse 14. This indeed is the prophet who was to come into the world, the people said. Perceiving then that they were about to come and make him king by force, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The people wanted a king. They wanted a king like Jesus. They wanted a king that could do miracles. Here comes Jesus. The people wanted a leader. Jesus had a lot to offer. The people wanted freedom. Jesus had a lot of followers. Here comes Jesus to Jerusalem during the Passover feast where thousands and thousands of worshipers came from all over the Roman Empire and even from beyond to celebrate the miraculous event of Passover. Thousands of years before, the Jews had been slaves in Egypt. You might have seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, or the cartoon, The Prince of Egypt. The people were mistreated and they cried out to God and God answered them. A series of plagues came and one plague was terribly devastating. It claimed the firstborn of each household. The Jews were told to kill a spotless lamb or goat, the best they had, and to paint its blood on the doorposts of their home, and the angel of death would pass over, thus the feast of Passover. You might say, really, pastor, that's how it worked? Well, really. And I'm sure that if you, if you and I told those people 3,500 years ago that you can inject some dead cells into your body and you would be protected from the sickness, they would go, are you serious? Really? It's all a matter of perspective. The angel of death passed over the Jews, but not the Egyptians. It was devastating. They refused to read the email. The king of Egypt told Moses, get those people out of here. The people of God cried out, save us. And God answered. Here comes Jesus to celebrate Passover. Thousands and thousands of people coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, singing and shouting. And here comes Jesus, and here's the story in Matthew 21. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came uh, to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to his two disciples, saying to them, go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Matthew is citing a prophetic fulfillment from Zechariah 9.9. And look at the prophecy, your king is coming, humble on a donkey, not a horse, definitely not a war horse. Matthew 21, 6 and 7, the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. This was an old custom. You can read about it in 2 Kings 9, 13. Matthew 21, 8, most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. In the Gospel of John, John tells us in John 12, 3, they were palm branches. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. Palm branches had actually become like a flag of the Jewish people. They were a patriotic symbol. So all of a sudden, people were waving these flags, these palm branches, and they're shouting things about kings coming into town in Jerusalem with these massive crowds. Matthew 21, 9. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It was exciting. Hosanna originally meant save us, and it comes from Psalm 118. Uh, In Matthew, it is left untranslated because it became a shout of praise. It meant save us, but all of a sudden it became known to be like almost like hallelujah. It was a shout of praise. Psalm 118 is one of what's called the Hallel Psalms or Psalms of Praise, and those were the songs that they sang when they were coming to celebrations in Jerusalem. These songs recount God's deliverance. Psalm 118, 25, save us, Hosanna. We pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They're singing the songs that they sing, except now someone is writing into the town they're singing it to. Hosanna to the son of David. The son of David. The son of David was code word for king, Messiah, chosen one. 
when Mark and Luke tell their story in their gospels, they give us more insight and help interpret what's going on. Luke 19, 38 says, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Mark eleven ten 10 says, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. They are singing to their prospective king as he rides into town. These people want a king. They are calling Jesus king. And Jesus never says no. They are waving palm branches. It's a patriotic rally at Passover in Jerusalem, and the Romans were watching. Matthew 21, 10 and 11. And when he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Who is this? It's always a question we all need to answer. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, everyone had to make their mind up about Jesus. You and I still have to make up our minds about Jesus. The most important question we can possibly ask is, who is Jesus? It's the most important question to answer. Jesus had to spend his preaching time talking about service, sacrifice, and love, even requiring his followers to love their enemies. He had told his disciples that he would be put to death and come back alive from the dead. Jesus told them this over and over. Mark 10 33 through 44, he says, see, we are going up to Jerusalem, up to Jerusalem. And the son of man, code word for Jesus, will be delivered over to the chief priest and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles or the Romans. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him and after three days he will rise. Well, they didn't get it because that was a pretty big tale to get, let's face it. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You tell your kid something and swoosh, it goes right over their heads. They, they, they look at you and they say, well, you just don't understand. And then someone else tells them exactly the same thing. And that person is a genius. They didn't get what Jesus said. They didn't get it. John 12, 16 says that his disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, he had risen from the dead. He had ascended into heaven. Then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. Hindsight's always 2020, you see. They were expecting something different. The people were expecting something different. They were not expecting him to ride in on a donkey. They would have preferred a war horse. They were not expecting him to go without a fight, go to the cross without a fight. They were expecting him to fight. The prophet Isaiah says something quite different, though, when he predicts the Messiah, the king coming. Isaiah 9, 6 said he will be called the prince of peace. And then the same prophet, Isaiah, reveals God's plans for Jesus in the great passage of Isaiah 53. It says, describing Jesus, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. We did not understand him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him, the chastisement that brought us peace. Because he's the prince of peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. This is not what they were expecting on the first Palm Sunday, the Holy Week, the Passion Week. They were not expecting a suffering savior. They were expecting a conquering king. On Sunday, they shouted, Hosanna! But by Friday, five days later, they shouted, crucify him. They even had the option of picking to free Jesus. And another criminal that was there, Barabbas. Jesus was falsely accused. Barabbas was accused. He was a rebel against Rome. But he was fighting Rome. So they picked Barabbas to be released and not Jesus, the one who taught to love your enemies, because they wanted something different. If Jesus was getting a performance review from the crowds 2,000 years ago, the little box would be checked, does not meet expectations. When I think of 2020 right now, and if I could give it a review, I would check the box that says, does not meet expectations. I would say fail. On January 1st, on New Year's Day 2020, I did not expect an empty church on Palm Sunday. I did not expect an empty church to begin the biggest celebration week of the year. I did not expect people to be holed up in their homes. I did not expect people to be laid off from work. I did not expect people to be sick and dying of a new virus. People that are connected to me, to us. 
20 has not met my expectations. I expected a full house on Palm Sunday. I expected to spend time with my newborn granddaughter, Jubilee, a little over a week old now. I expected to celebrate my grandson, Ty's first birthday in person at the end of this month. I expected to visit my parents who are closing in on 80 years old and live over a thousand miles away in just a few weeks. These expectations will most likely not be met. 2020 has not, my, not met my expectations. What about you? Jesus did not meet the crowd's expectations. He was not what they wanted, but he is exactly what they needed. He is the one we need because God always gives us exactly what we need. He does not meet our expectations. He exceeds our expectations. Jesus is the king that we need. The king is humble and gentle and sacrificial. He is the one who saves. He is the one that puts it on the line for us. He's the one that suffers alongside of us. This king, King Jesus, was buried and resurrected on the third day. Jesus exceeded expectations. He still exceeds expectations. Psalm 118 that Hosanna comes from, that they were singing when they came up, gives us so many wonderful things that are all true in Jesus. Psalm 118, out of my distress, I called on the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. Psalm 118, six, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm 118, eight, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Psalm 118, 13, I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. Psalm 118, 14, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Psalm 118, 17, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Psalm 118, 21, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. All those statements are true in Jesus. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 2020 is not over yet. 2020 is not over yet. God has a way of restoring things. The prophet Joel records in 225, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. He'll restore to you. God is good. God is great. Jeremiah, the prophet, ex had, had experienced terrible things in his life. He writes in Lamentations 3, 19, 24, Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers and is bowed down within me, but I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is what I need. Therefore, I will hope in him. It's a good day to say Hosanna. It's a good day to say, I will hope in him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are the people that call Jesus Lord. Have you called Jesus Lord? It's easy. It's easy to start that relationship with Jesus. It's ABC. You admit that you need a Savior. We all do. We all have a burden of sin that needs to be forgiven. We all need it. We all need to say, Hosanna, save us. We can do that. Admit, you believe in what Jesus did. This week starts Holy Week, Passion Week. Jesus rides into town on Palm Sunday. He's crucified on Friday. He resurrects on Sunday. Believe in what happened. Believe in Jesus, what he did for you. He was in your place on the cross. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Shout Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus is our Lord. We are blessed to be called his people. All you have to do is pray, A, B, C. Father, we just come before you right now for anyone that might be listening and watching today, Lord, that have not started this wonderful relationship with you, that no matter what happens, we can say, you are my portion, my hope is in you, that we can have peace in the middle of crisis, that we can have comfort in the middle of turmoil. If they don't have that, Lord, they need you. We pray, we admit, Lord, that we need a Savior because we're sinners. We believe in what you did, Jesus. Died, buried, resurrected for us. 
we confess you as Lord. You're the king that was promised. We worship you, Lord. We give you thanks. We shout Hosanna to you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that, let us know that. Comment on the thread. We want to send you some information. I want you to enjoy this Palm Sunday. Shout, wave your palm branches, whatever you have, and enjoy because the king has come. And this week, together, we'll unfold the Holy Week. We'll celebrate next Sunday his resurrection from the dead. So let me ask the Lord to bless you. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Join us, Facebook Live, Monday through Friday for devotions. Join us for all our Holy Week this service. Do it with me right now, and you can type it in your comment thread. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bless you. Thanks so much for joining us for Church Online this week. And once again, if you're new, we would love to get in touch with you. So please send us a message through Facebook, email, call the church office. Just get a hold of us. We have a free gift that we'd love to send you, and we hope that you have an excellent week. We'll see you next week.